Okay, so now that we've got our slabs in, just to refresh your memory, we've got three different massing strategies with three different slabs brought in. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put in structural columns now. And so basically what we want to do is two things. Number one is we want to establish a grid of points, which is our column grid, which can continue up through the building consistently. And then number two is we want to make sure that only columns that fall within the massing get deployed. We don't want to have columns sticking out on our balconies or overhangs or things like that. Like we don't want a column accidentally coming down from here and hanging out in space and on, you know, areas where the slab cuts back, we don't want columns poking up. So we're going to set up that logic to do that. Um, and what we're going to use is to, I'll give you a preview of how we're going to do that, is we're going to use the add structural column component, which needs actually a curve and a column type. It can also look for a base level and a top level, but again, it'll sort of assume those based on um, It'll, it'll assume those based on its location. It will automatically populate those. So to get there, the first thing we're going to do is create a grid of points. And so what I want to do is I actually am going to start with a rectangle grid. This will, this will represent our column grid. Uh, where is it? You know, I usually type it, but this one I always seem to go to have to find. So it's in vector. Anything related to points is in vectors. So you have params, math, sets, curves, surfaces, meshes, intersections, transforms, display. That's your native Rhino stuff. Rhino 8 has this new tab, which I've dug into a little bit, but I have to dig into more. But this is, this is new as of Rhino 8. Um, so vector is where our points will live, and then grid, and then I have rectangular grid. All right, and what this wants is a base plane for the grids. It's going to want a size of the grid cells in each direction. It's going to want this, uh, so the x and the y. It's going to do the extent of them in the x and y. So the size is the size of the spacing between grids. So like 12 feet by 16 feet or whatever you want to do. And then the extent is the number of grids that you're going to actually put in that direction. Now we want to make sure that we cover the building. So we don't have to get this exact. We want to get the spacing what we want it to be, but the extents just need to make sure that it's a little bit bigger than the building in order to be able to cover the whole thing. So from there, what I'm going to do, so what I'm going to do is um, establish the size of the grid first. And just to kind of also show you guys what's happening, this is the grid that it's generating. Um, the grid component itself will also give you curves and points. The curves are the outlines of the cell, the points are the intersection. It doesn't display the points, so if I just put in a point component, I will see those now. So there's my points. So it gives you kind of some default numbers. So what I'm going to do is I want this to occur at every level. And I also want to make sure that we are in alignment with the building itself. So I'm going to create a point, which is going to be the corner of my building. I want to make sure I use the right one. So if you type in point, this here, I think is a collection. Yeah, it's Revit points. This is the one you want. So if you're getting an error, make sure you have the right point component. It should say PT. And then I'm going to just draw a point in my viewport. And I'm going to put it here. And you know what? to keep myself organized on my grasshopper inputs, I'm going to call this um, grid set out point. Okay, make this color that is going to pop, make it red, make sure that we put this on that layer. Um, and then I'm going to just, I'm going to use a geometry pipeline because I, again, I always like to do that rather than referencing things. And if I'm going to do that, I'm actually just going to name this with uh, underscores to make sure I don't have any issues with the syntax. So grid set out point, use my geometry pipeline. The layer is going to be grid set out point, and then click on the point here. 
and so I should now have my grid setout point is being referenced into there and it should be at the bottom corner of the building and it is so that's good so um, what I now want to do is I'm going to essentially establish a grid at that point the whole way up but I also want to rotate it and make sure that it um, aligns with the building so I'm going to put an XY plane at that point so this is going to be my sort of base plane for that and I'm going to put a rotation on it to make sure that it aligns with the building rotate so I'm going to rotate the plane I want to rotate it about itself right and then the last thing I'm going to do is get the angle to rotate it turn off these other ones by default I think it does like 180 or something but I'm going to do a radians conversion because angles are always in radians and I know from working on this that it's about 12.22 degrees but just to kind of show you polyline and then I'm going to do another polyline um, make sure I snap to that there and then I'll do an angle from there to there and then from there to there 12.22 so plug this in to the degrees plug that into there and now my plane aligns with my building so my grid is there for going to align with my building and if you want if I can plug this in you'll see that just at the ground level let me turn this to wireframe you'll see that it's aligning with the building and it's going back that way um, you could have it align with this face if you want it all really depends or sorry this face here if you want it all really depends on your design intent um, but for now we're just going to have it align this way and if again if they stick out of the building we're going to sort that out later but I don't want them to be just at every single um, every single uh, at just the ground floor I want there to be one of these grids of points at every level so to do that what I'm going to do is rather than having um, just this have one point associated with it I'm going to do a series of points which I'm going to take I want to get a point at every level aligned with that so I'm going to do a deconstruct point so I get the X and Y from there then I'm going to do a construct point and I'm going to use this X and Y but then for the Z I'm actually going to use my ele elevations of my levels so you see when I plug this in here I now have a point that's associated with every level and so my origin of my plane here I'm going to make it actually this so now we have a grid of points and a series of planes at every level the output of this is a collection of three-dimensional points in space um, to further make sure this works let's get the size working so let's say my grid let's say this is a concrete structure building so maybe we do like a 15 grid 15 feet by 20 feet grid okay so if I look in plan it looks like my whole building is getting covered which is good some of these are going to get removed if I wanted to make this operate a little bit slower I, uh, a little bit faster sorry I'll set up a slider so that was being covered but the shortcut for a slider is the bottom number of the slider is less than whatever you want the value to be so you can use one and then whatever you want the top value to be so 10 let's say so now I have a slider that goes from 0 to 10 and so for my the the number in the X direction I probably don't need 10 so I'm just gonna pull this back um, I actually don't need this one either it's falling outside the building so we'll go to 6 and then I'm going to also um, we'll set that for the UI as well but that should be good six five we don't need looks like we don't need that top one either so now these are the grids that are going to fall within our building so I wanna you know you what what this 
data tree is giving me is actually a series of numbers 2, then 201, then going down. This is basically all of my um, planes, or sorry, it's essentially my grid of points, and then it's giving me the, um, like, sorry, you know what? Let me simplify this. It'll make me easier to explain it. So this first number is actually um, the floor, I believe. Let me see. No, I'm sorry. The first number is, uh, yeah, the first number is the floor. I'm sorry. The first number is floor. So zero is equal to floor number one. The second number is the amount of, is the, is the row going in the x direction. And then each one of these individual points is kind of the corresponding one in that row. So if I do a list item, you can see what it'll do is it'll give me the first item here. And if I was to copy this slider to just scrub through it, you'll see that it's giving me 0, 1, 2, 3. And it should be giving me that on each floor. So it's giving me essentially the point in each location on each floor. And that's what the data tree is giving me. OK. So I'm going to simplify this in a cleaner way. I like to always have the components outside. It's good to test, but for I, that's sort of one of my basics. Is for sort of one of my my standard methods is I always make sure I have it um, a component that does it, and I don't embed operations within other components. It's just clearer to understand. Sometimes those little icons you can miss them, and so on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab these section curves that are coming out of this. So right now these sections are feeding into this floor component. I want to use those floor slabs. And what I'm going to do is test whether or not the points fall within the curve. Because if they do, it means there's a column there. And if they don't, it means there's no column there. But the other thing I need to do is I need to also test to make sure that there's a top and a bottom, right? So you might have a point. If you think about it, um, I can sketch this really quickly in 2D, 2D. But let's say you have my not having my shortcuts is making this hard. So let's say you have a slab here and a slab here that's slightly overhang. You might have a point that falls, you know, like here. This is a section, right? But you don't want a column that comes up and sticks into space. So you want to make sure you have a point and a point. And if you do, draw a column. If you don't, don't draw a column. A little bit off kilter, but that's OK. Ours will be vertical. All right? So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to um, grab these curves, which represent my floor slabs. OK? I'm going to simplify this. Sorry, not the curve, simplify the tree. Simplify the tree there. And so now we have basically 0 to 30. Here we have 0 to 30 is the first number. So the first number of both data trees is the same, which means we can sort of operate on these together. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a shift paths. So what the shift paths will do is if I take, I'll show you, I think I've talked about this in the smorgasbord, but it's going to essentially remove the last number on here and combine those into one list. So it's going to take everything that has the same first value and combine them. So it's shifting the paths over one. So it's eliminating this last number, shifting all the values into the higher level branch. So, you know what, let me keep that so you can see the difference. So once I plug the points into here, now I have the same numbers, it's the same values, right? Except now these go from zero all the way then to one, zero, down, 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 down to one, right? 
So what this does is this has 0 to 30 here, which gives us the same um, data structure as this. So what I can do now is I'm going to use what's called a point in curve. which is going to take all my points here and test whether or not they're within a curve. And the result should be this relationship, which is zero means it's outside, one means it's on the curve, and two means that it's inside the curve. So if I look at the results here, basically what I'm getting is this. All right. So what I want to do next is I actually want to um, take this and what this is giving me is a pattern okay and so what a, what a pattern will do is it'll essentially start to sort things depending on on what their pattern is if I do what's called a cull pattern so I'm going to take these shifted points let me clean this up a little bit more I've got my shifted points here that are going into my test component I'm going to grab those points I'm going to graph this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this so that basically I have a branch for every tree. I'm sorry, a branch for every point and a branch for every result. What this does is ensure it's going to test every single point against every single result where it's going to essentially allow me to p get a pattern going with those. So I'm going to take my, I'm going to do what's called a cull pattern. Okay. I'm going to plug my list of values into here. I'm going to plug my pattern into here. And what this is essentially going to do is it's going to cull out the list based on the pattern. So anything that has the two or the one is going to end up here anything that has a zero is going to get removed. Okay, So the resulting list is all the values that fall within all the values that fall within the curve, anything that falls outside the curve gets removed. So this is what's sorting and removing all of the points for us that fall outside. So if I was to do like a point here just to preview it wrong point I just did what I said not to do okay grab that you'll see that if I hide everything else for clarity the only points it's giving us are the ones that fall within my volume all right okay so the last thing we need to do is basically just connect these um, together and say you know draw a curve for the points that um, the points that basically are aligned with each other right and so this is where the data tree manipulation gets a little tricky and I recently learned this trick um, there used to be a lot of like shifting paths and things like that that would have to happen here but there's a component called relative item shout out to my coworker Maddie for turning me on to this relative item right so what this is going to take is it's going to take a data tree and it's going to take an offset okay and then you can do some wrapping if you want but we're going to leave that as false so here's my data tree the offset i'm going to use is syntax is plus one semicolon zero and you know what should have done this in a panel sorry it's open curly bracket close curly bracket open cur open curly bracket plus one semicolon zero close curly bracket okay now I can take this shrink this down plug this into my offset and what it does is it basically gives me all the items but they're shifted one way right so this here if I do this point here it's going to give me all the ones that are basically on the ground floor and up 
right? But they also are the ones that have uh, a cousin or a, a sibling below. So like for example, these up here don't fall within, or sorry, this one here is not gonna fall within when it comes up, right? So it doesn't get included. And then if I do this, I'm gonna get the opposite, right? And again, the, and it's not gonna give me the lower bottom section on this one, because it's shifting, and it's not gonna give me the top section on this. But like I said, the other good thing is that it's, it's going to, um, like these, again, these, fall within the volume, but if you draw a line up from that, they're going to miss this, so therefore they're not included. So all I need to do now is merge these two, and now get rid of this, and I'm going to do a polyline. And now I've got all my columns that fall within the thing, perfectly straight up and down, and so on. And um, you know what, I'm going to uh, turn these off for a second, disable my Rhino inside, because I want to show you that if I take this thing and I move it, let me turn on my gumball, and I move it this way, the column is going to update. So it's pretty, pretty cool, right? So now, like, here's a weird area where the overhang works so that they don't get included. And again, don't look at these floor slabs. These are just, these are static. These are cut from before. Look at the volume. But this is kind of a really cool operation because it's essentially going to always just give you columns that fall within. Here it won't give me ones because my grid doesn't extend back that far. So, you know, if I was to turn my grid on, you would see it doesn't go back this far. So I just have to manipulate my grid. But let me undo it back to my original volume there. Um, okay. And then I will, you know, turn these back on. And then I'm also going to then do the last operation here, which is I have a series of curves. I'm just gonna do very simple add structural, add structural column. Let me save this first, save this. And then if I take and I plug this into my curves, it's gonna think for a second, and it's going to give me a structural column on each one of those. Okay, turn black, that's good. You can see them populating here. And if I was to go into my Revit model, there's all my columns. Now, by default, this is probably picking the top one in the list. I'm not sure what it uses for the default. But we want to use a concrete rectangular, let's say 20 by 20. So what I'm going to do then is go back into here. And I'm going to put in a type component and I'm going to right click and I'm going to set this for um, structural columns and I'm going to set this for concrete rectangular column 20 by 20 plug that into the type it's going to think for a second and then abracadabra there it goes 20 by 20 looks a little chunky in there might be too big um, let's do let's do like a uh, smaller one. Let's do let's do 12 by 18 for fun. I feel like in this building a square column might work better. So to show you guys how to edit that, um, let's do it. Let's do like a 16 by 16, or you know what? Better yet, let's just do a 12 by 12. We'll be typical architects and make them smaller than they probably have to be. So let me come in here, right click on this, or sorry, just click on this. Go to edit type. I'm going to duplicate this column. I'm going to call it 12 by 12. And then in my base, I have my, my B dimension and my H dimension. These are um, standard for concrete design. So I just click OK. Now I have a 12 by 12. I'm going to come back into here, right click, and now my 12 by 12 is there. So I select that. Let it think for a second. And there we go. There's my 12 by 12 columns. And this should work. The same strategy should work on any of the massings that we've done. The one thing that's a little bit off here is that um, the structural columns are actually uh, 
if they're coincident with the edge, you're going to get this. So I would say for now, you might just need to go back and manually delete some of these if they look like they're funky. Again, we're not doing full structural design, but we want to kind of make sure that it looks believable. Um, and what would end up happening is you would probably then need to start strategically placing columns in areas that are, um, you know, that are like critical, um, like overhangs or inset from these different areas. That's something we could look at maybe in a, in a different tutorial, but for now, this should get you a good underlying base grid of the whole building. Um, and like I said, the same method should work on any of these massing strategies. You basically just need to give it, the only thing you're using consistently from them both is uh, is your elevations, which you know you should be able to get and use any, and then your curves, your curves that represent your floor contours. So if I was to come down here, here's my sorted pancakes, and then here's my, um, this was a lot more work, but this is essentially my curves, right? Here's the, the, some of these are surfaces, but you can get the outside face of it. You could plug that same logic of the curve, simplify all of this into here, and it should technically work. For, for the sake of fun let's let's actually try it so I'm going to lock the solver the, I have not tested this yet so I don't know if this is going to work in theory oh the column the um, the grid is not close to that so I might need to you know what just for fun I'm going to do I'm going to delete this one for now um, it's going to give me a warning in Revit letting me know that it's going to delete elements from Revit so I'm going to delete those, and then I'm going to give it a, um, what I wanted to do was make sure that my point here, this point is actually here. Okay, so we'll do that. Go back to Grasshopper, and then I want to make sure that my curves, which both go into the simplify and into that curve simplify oh no 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 that's um yeah the curves here's my section curves these should be grafted and simplified okay let me graft these I'll do the quick version even though I said not to and then my shift path is my points which actually I don't think we need to redo right now let's see if this works this might backfire but let's see if it goes looks promising let's see sweet all right nice nothing like when it actually works ex like you expect it to um, and should we try our luck and try to do it with the last building? Yeah, let's do it. Let's see. Lock the solver again. I'm going to move this point over to here. And then I'm going to come back into here. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I just need to copy this down, actually just move the whole thing, and then my curves that are coming out of here, let me see, those are my curves, these go into here, okay, and let's run it, let's see what happens. For some reason I feel like the lists don't match up perfectly here. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I paused it for a bit and it crashed. I think it's related to the list issue. 
Um, but I think for now, I'm not gonna worry too much about it because it looks like it's working in most conditions. So just worry about um, about getting that done. Um, all right, if you have any questions as you're working through this, let me know and good luck.